try to be brief. Um, and uh, one thing I guarantee you, whenever I speak, I try to say something that at the end of the 10 minutes, you'll learn something you didn't know before. That's what I always try to achieve. Learn something, you know, if you listen to a guy speak, I knew that already. You'll learn something you didn't know before. Um, We, the Yom Kippur is coming up, and we're going to be involved in something called Vidui, which is a confession. So the Rambam and others say that how do we learn this concept of Vidui, of confession? We learn it actually from a Pasuk and Pasha's Naso. Pasha's Naso deals with what happens if a Jew steals from a, another Jew, or if he steals from a, a Ger. So it says, Davera b'nei Yisrael, isha isha, a man or a woman, ki yasu mikol chatas adam, a person who does any of the averas, man, v'u'ol me'al v'ashem, v'ashma ha'nefesh ha'id. So he has, his v'ashma ha'nefesh ha'id, his nefesh has become um, damaged. It's sin, there's, there's something, there's, there's a defect in the nefesh. What does he do then? So what does this person do? He stole. He stole from someone. And what does he have to do? He has to return it. He has to pay a 20% penalty. He has to do something else. Vis vadu es chatasim. He has to confess his sin. Asher asu v'cheshiv es ashmo, ashmo v'rosho, v'chamishaso, and he has to return a fifth more. And it goes into what happens if he stole from a, from a person who has no relatives. So the person died, the person he stole it from died, he gives it to the relatives. What if the person has no relatives? No relatives at all. Then he gives it to the, um, then he gives it to the coin. Now, who has no relatives? Now, everyone's got some relatives. Um, a ger technically has no relatives because when he becomes a Jew, he's like a newborn baby. He's not really related in a legal sense. He's related in an emotional sense. He's not related in a legal sense. To the to the other the people he used to be in a family with. So, fine. You t you steal from someone, you pay them the money, you pay them the twenty percent, and you have to confess to God. If you haven't done that, you haven't repaired the damage. So, what does the confession accomplish? And the Rambam learns the the mitzvah of vidui, which we're going to do a bunch of times in Yom Kippur, right? This, um, from this puzzle. The Svasevus so explains that the, if, if a Gentile comes to you and asks you, how should I pray? I want to pray. I don't believe all the stuff they taught me in church. What should I pray? What you should tell them is, Elokai Neshama Shanasabi Taharahi. God, the Neshama you put in me is Tahar. That's, there's a, it's in the beginning of our davening. You don't have to say that. That whole, that whole paragraph. And what are you saying? The neshama you put in me is pure. You wake up in the morning and you say that. It has no difference what you did yesterday. You could have been the biggest, biggest, most terrible person. It doesn't make a difference. Your neshama is undamaged. It cannot be damaged. The neshama cannot be damaged. Why? I was a kid, I was into mineralogy. And when you study mineralogy, let's say you have a mineral. This is a mineral, this is what? What is this? Tape recorder? You taping it? <laughs> <laughs> let's say this is a mineral, right? So I'm not sure what this is. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a, a sapphire or a garnet. I don't know what it is, right? So there's something called a hardness scale. It goes from 0 to 10. 1 to 10. Talc, the softest mineral, there's one. Everything cuts talc. Diamond, there's ten. Nothing cuts diamond except another diamond. Mm -hmm. So if I have something, and I, I think it's, I don't know, I think maybe it's a garnet, right? So a garnet, let's say, is a six. How do I know that? I see, does it cut things that are a five, and does things that are a seven cut it, right? That's how I know what it is. It's a way of identifying minerals, if you're not sure. The neshama is not from this world. It's a piece of God. You saw those pictures in Syria, the people with gas, terrible pictures, right? It hurts to see them. It hurts. Why does it hurt? 
Why does it hurt more than seeing cows, or trees, or forest fire? You know why it hurts? There's a piece of God in human being. Someone may claim, claim to be an atheist. I don't believe in God, I don't believe in any of this stuff. I don't know why you guys are into those lectures of Beth Kavir. I don't believe anything. But he feels that another person's life is somehow special. If he really doesn't believe in God, you're nothing but, uh, what did Dostoevsky say? If there's nothing, if you don't believe in God, there's nothing but kartoffel, right? Nothing but potatoes. Right? Nothing but, nothing but potatoes. Um, because really, there's no difference. A, a human being, if all he is is chemicals, so I like those chemicals more than these chemicals, but all he is is chemicals. What's the big deal if you murder someone? We feel it is a big deal. Why do we feel it's a big deal? Because there's something special about a person. What's special? That's what's special. There's, some, there's a divine spark. There's a neshama in each person. It's not from this world. There's something in you that's not from this world. And that's why the kind of neshama shemosa be tahorahi, it cannot be damaged. Just like nothing can cut a diamond, there's nothing in this world that can cut a neshama. It can never be harmed. Only human beings have a neshama. Jews and Gentiles, they both have a neshama. Men and women both have a neshama. Different. The neshama of a man is a little different than the neshama of a woman. The neshama of a coin is a little different than the neshama of a, of a levy in Yisrael. I'm not harmed by going to the cemetery, by marrying a divorcee. A coin is. Right? A Jew and a Gentile a little different neshamas. We both have little different neshamas, but all of us have a piece of God. An animal doesn't have a neshama. But an animal is different than a rock. An animal has a nefesh. Okay? What's a nefesh? A nefesh is feelings, consciousness. Okay? Feelings. You can't, killing an animal is not a problem. If you need to kill an animal, you kill the animal. You want a coat? You want a steak? You want shoes? Go kill the animal. No problem. No problem. But you can't make it suffer. You can't give it pain, right? Why? The animal doesn't have a neshama. So if you, you kill it, there's no piece of God in there. You haven't, you haven't taken a piece of God and taken it from the earth. But it has feelings. And you can't, you can't, you can't cause it pain. It's called We have a nefesh and a neshama. We have both. We have feelings. Now you can't hurt the neshama. But can you hurt somebody's feelings? You bet. You can certainly hurt the nefesh. The nefesh can get all kinds of damage. This is for ashma nefesh. This is damage. When you steal from someone, you do a chet, what happens, your neshama is not harmed. The neshama is right there. Peace of God, can't be harmed. But your nefesh can be harmed. Your feelings can get hurt. When a person does a chet, he's hurting himself. He's damaging himself. Yeah, he may be damaging the guy he stole from. He can be damaging other things, but he's hurting himself. Okay? So a person and an animal, not every animal has a nefesh. Okay? Dog has a nefesh. Cow has a nefesh. A frog doesn't. A fish doesn't. You think a fish has feelings? It's all reflexive. If I clap my hands in front of your eyes, you'll blink. You put a worm in front of a fish. The fish isn't fish scratching his beard. So that's an interesting worm. No, a fish sees a worm, he goes for the worm. It's all reflexes. An animal, like a dog or a cat, has feelings, has consciousness. A fish doesn't. So you can kill a fish any way you want. You throw it in the boat, hit it on the head. can't do that to an animal. A way to know whether an animal has a nefesh or not is if its blood is trafe. Okay? So fish blood is meaningless. A dam your nefesh, the blood is in the nefesh. Now, you have this neshama that's part of God, and you have this nefesh that even animals have. We have. It can get harmed. It can be damaged. It can hurt someone's feelings for life. Right? How, do they, how does one affect the other? How does the ne how, how, how can you repair the nefesh? So there's something in between called the ruach. The ruach literally means spirit. When the voice comes from that, speech comes from that, song comes from that, music comes from that. The Ruach connects the Neshama with the Nefesh. Imagine three rings. There's a beer company. You have like a ring, and a ring, and another ring. 
The bottom of the neshama is the top of the ruach, the bo- and the bottom of the ruach is the top of the nefesh. Okay? The ruach, speech, heals the nefesh. Torah is very much Baal Peh. We spend, the, the two countries in the world have the highest cell phone usage per capita in the world. In the world. What are those two countries? Israel's one, and Finland's the other. Why Finland? Because the, 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 they gave cell phones to kids when they were two years old. In Finland, that's when they, they first made cell phones working in Finland. Nokia was like the first cell phone network. So everybody in Finland had a cell phone. Right? And Israel. Why Israel? The Jews talk a lot. <laughs> Why do they talk a lot? We have a power. We talk because we have a power for the neshama to heal the nefesh. We spend a lot of time in shul, davening, speaking. Torah Shaval Peh, you speak the Torah. You go to shul, you speak. You don't just read it, you speak it. Why do you speak it? Because speech is a way for your neshama to affect your nefesh. Okay? So, so the person who is mizvade, the person who confesses that he stole something, what he's doing is his neshama says, I stole something. What's the problem? My nefesh is being healed by my admission of that. Mm -hmm. To God, to the other person. You heal your nefesh that way. An animal cannot do that. If an animal (coughs) walks into a a room, a dog walks into a room and sees a cat, what's the dog going to do? Right? Let's say you walk into a room and you see someone you really don't like someone who really ticked you off, really hurt your feelings. You want to go, ah, like the dog wants to go to the cat. <laughs> but you don't. What do you do? You say, listen, Shmuel, you're going to be out of here in 10 minutes. There's no point fighting with this guy. Calm down. He's not important. You're bigger than that. What do you just do? Your neshama spoke to your nefesh. Your nefesh wanted to go kill him, but your neshama spoke. You spoke to yourself. Speech can do that. Speech, the ruach, connects the neshama with the nefesh. This is how so many things work. Torah Hashem tamima, meshivat nefesh. The Torah is tamima, it's whole. By speaking it, by learning it, we meshivat, we heal, we heal the nefesh. And it works between people. Your wife is upset. What does she really want? She wants you to give her a kind word. So it would be okay. I care about you. Marriage allows one neshama to connect with another neshama. The closest thing we have in this world to God, you see religious people who don't treat each other well, they're not religious. Somebody says to me, I saw this religious Jew, he stole this and did that. I said, who says he's religious? Who makes him religious? There's nothing religious about him. The closest thing we have in this world to God is each other. Is each other. The neshama of another person. Okay? The neshama of another person. I was reading that every one of the Apollo 13 and 11 and 12 astronauts became religious people. They weren't. Many of them were not. You go through space, it's dark, it's cold, it's sterile. The moon is sterile. You want to do surgery without washing your hands? Do it on the moon. Sterile, no bacteria, no nothing. Same thing with Mars. Sterile, space is sterile. Black, cold as death. Okay? A warm day on Mars, a warm day in Antarctica is a cold day on Mars. It's, 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 it's really cold and it's dead. The whole universe seems to be dead. And there's this little blue ball floating in space. A little blue ball floating in space. You get a little closer to it, it's blue, it's green. Eh? little tiny blue ball, and then you land on it? How can you not believe in God? Now imagine you landed on this little blue ball, and there were no people. Just vegetation, animals, whatever. And you are exploring this earth, and there's not one other human being. And then, after exploring this planet for days, weeks, months, you find another person. How do you feel? Another person! <laughs> A person! You know why? Because we are attracted and connected to each other. Because we are attracted and connected to Hashem in the other person. 
marriage gives us an opportunity, an opportunity, it takes work, it takes time, for us to connect with another nisham. And how do you connect? Through speech, a kind word, a thoughtful word. This is how we heal ourselves, and this is how we heal each other. Have a good year, everybody.